So I mentioned before that drafting Brandon Ingram might be the first step towards turning this uh, 76ers dumpster fire around. Because he was a beast against Detroit, man. Grabbing rebounds and running all the way down the floor, finishing inside, making Tobias Harris look stupid. Had a couple of mid-range jumpers and he even had this huge layup over Andre Drummond. Ingram looks like the truth and the perimeter scorer we need. So that's awesome. But I also want to tell you today, we may have made a breakthrough in our uh, big man solution thing. Jaleel Okafor was the one losing the race for me, as I felt Nerlens Noel, as well as Joel Embiid were the options, because Okafor, very good post-up player, and uh, scored more than enough times for us down there, but the defense, the rebounding, just didn't know if he was good enough in those areas. Well, speaking of that Pistons game, Okafor did finish with nine rebounds, and he also had some defensive moments, which makes me say, well, okay, maybe there's something. And then on the flip side, Joel Embiid, he had a good game against the Pistons as well, but I've mentioned before, Embiid still struggles around the basket finishing, and uh, Okafor is great there. And I tell you all this to say, in this Miami Heat game, something happened, okay? Something happened that made me realize, you know what, I think I may have found an answer. And I'm just gonna put it to you bluntly. Jaleel Okafor went God mode. I mean straight, frickin' stupid, I can't be defended mode. And it wasn't just from the post, he was hitting the mid-range as well, which is huge, I mean. I've said before, you know, if he can hit from mid and allow us to open up our offense a little bit more, that's really significant. But he really just seemed unstoppable in the post, and you're going to see from his point total by the end of this game, they just couldn't defend him, no matter what they wanted to do. And I was able to use a Nerlens Noel pick and roll to do it at times too, so the fear of Nerlens being kind of a non-factor in the offense if Jaleel has the ball so much, Probably not, especially if Okafor's hitting that mid-range jumper. And you'll see the point total for him, it just keeps climbing, and it's against multiple defenders. I mean, he had Andre Blatch on him, he couldn't do anything, he did it against Chris Bosh here. Okafor, he was huge in this Miami Heat game. And uh, I just kind of realized, this guy should be our number one option. He really should be. And look at this one here. The offensive rebound and then the putback... This is huge for Okafor. These are the things that I didn't expect he was ever going to be able to do. But if he's doing these things, if he's grabbing the rebounds, if he's being this unstoppable in the post... Now granted, they were kind of stupid for having Joe Johnson on him, but look at this. Then they started double teaming and we were able to kick out to guys. So then I started to realize, if we pull an Orlando Magic with Dwight Howard with one in and four out, with Okafor surrounded by shooters, this might be the way to go for this team. And let me tell you also in this game that Joel Embiid got more than a few moments to uh, try to finish inside. He couldn't do it. Too many misses around the basket because what I was doing with Okafor, I tried to do with Embiid as well. And so, this honestly might be our best option because we can put a lineup around Okafor of Seth Curry, TJ McConnell, Nick Stauskas, Robert Covington, Brandon Ingram, Dario Saric. There are shooters on this team, and you saw when Miami double teamed what happened. Now, of course, if we commit to this, then we're just going to have to go full-fledged into Nerland's Noel learning how to hit mid-range. But even then, in the game, we saw when we ran a pick-and-roll with Nerland's, it was still able to get Okafor his offense. So perhaps Joel Embiid is the guy who needs to go. So, if we decide on that, who are we going to trade him for? Well, as much as I like the idea of Okafor being unstoppable in the post, there is still the question about his defense. If we surround him with as many defenders as possible, it probably would be okay. Now, we've already got Nerlens at power forward, so that's good, and Brandon Ingram seems like he can grow into at least an okay defender. However, I think we need a real defensive player at the shooting guard position. And if I'm looking around the NBA for a, a shooting guard who we could trade for, what about Jalen Brown on the Washington Wizards? Now look, I understand the three-pointer, it says 66, the dude can't shoot, but you know what? He's not too far away either, and I think he is the type of defender that we could really use at the two-guard spot, because if Okafor is our center, we're going to need defenders around him like I just mentioned. Not only that, the Wizards already have Bradley Beal, and if we look at their center situation, Nene, Amari Stoudemire, JJ Hickson, you telling me they couldn't use Joel Embiid at that center spot? 
It's an idea, man. Jalen Brown, a young player, athletic as hell. Already a decent defender who can grow into a very good one. We just gotta work on that outside shot. Perhaps he's the option at the two-guard spot? But then also, if we're committing to Okafor at center and surrounding him with shooters, Ish Smith is probably off the team. And our starting point guard is... In my opinion, I think TJ McConnell should start because he's a better defender than Seth Curry. He can kind of be like our version of Derek Fisher. This is just a few ideas, and I'm throwing them at you all at once because I thought of it while I was going to sleep last night. Could be some drastic changes with this 76ers team, and it all stems off the fact that Okafor is just too damn good in the post, and Embiid scares me with his finishing ability.